This is a continuation of a series of videos that I'm making to support a course in introductory proof writing. Today we want to look at the notion of a relation on a set. So just offhand, this is a way of relating two elements from a set. So say you've got the set of real numbers. Your relation should, could be equality. So like two is equal to two, but two is not equal to three. So you would say that two and two are related. Or you could have some sort of inequality like less than or equal to. That could be an example of a relation. So two is less than or equal to three. So two and three are related in that case. So if we want to abstract that to something that we could say about kind of a general set, we would do it in the following way. So a relation on a set A is a subset R of A cross A. In other words, the Cartesian product of A with itself. And then notationally, we generally write X, R, Y instead of X comma Y is in R. And furthermore, we would write X not R, Y, instead of X, Y is not in R. And often, depending on what the relation is, we will use the standard notation for the relation. So if the relation is equality, then we'll just put an equal sign there instead of an R. If it's less than or equal to, we would put a less than or equal to there. If it's a subset relationship, we would put a subset symbol there, so on and so forth. Okay, so here are two like kind of basic simple examples of relations. So let's say first off we have the set A, which is the set containing the numbers 1, 2, 3. Then we have a subset of A cross A, which is given by this three element set. So we have 1, 2, 1, 3, and 2, 3. So notice that means that 1 is related to 2, 1 is related to 3, and 2 is related to 3. But then all other pairs are not related. So in other words, 1 is not related to itself, 3 is not related to 1, and then so on and so forth. So these are equivalent ways of writing the ordered pairs being inside of this subset R. So next up, we'll look at this relation and see if it represents any relation that we might see like in nature. What I mean by in nature, like naturally when you're working on a math problem. Obviously, under this definition, our relation can be essentially anything. But is this one that's familiar? And if you look at it for just a second, you will see that it is familiar. This is just a less than relationship. So maybe we could put notice here, R is in fact all ordered pairs X, Y, N, A, such that X is less than Y. Those are the only three ordered pairs that satisfy this rule. Okay, so let's look at this second example. So in this ca case, A is the set containing one, two, three, four, five, six. And then we've got this big subset R of A cross A. So notice it has one comma one. That means one is related to one. One is related to two. Actually, it looks like one is related to everything. Then furthermore, we have two is related to itself. Two is related to four and two is related to six. Three is related to itself and three is related to six. And then four, five, and six are only related to themselves. So again, since we're just working with the abstract definition of a relation, this couldn't mean anything in nature. But as an example, maybe we could look at this and see if this represents some sort of well-known relation. And if we look at it, we can see that the first number always divides the second number. One divides one, one divides two. In fact, one divides everything. Two divides four, two divides six, but two doesn't divide anything else except for two, which is itself up here. Then three divides itself and three divides six. And then as you can see, once we're past three, the numbers only divide themselves because we're only going up to six. So in this case, we could say R equals all numbers X comma Y in A cross A. I should have put A cross A here such that x divides y. Let's recall our notation is this x divides y. Okay, so let's maybe get rid of this and we'll look at a graphical way to represent relations. Next up, we want to look at the tool of directed graphs as a way to visualize relations. 
So we're gonna start off with an example of a relation that doesn't really mean anything. So let's say we've got the set A, which is the set containing A, B, C, D. And then next we've got this relation, which is again a subset of A cross A, and here we have A comma A is in there. That means A is related to A, A is related to B, C is related to D, and D is related to C. So we will graphically represent the elements of this set by vertices in our graph. So let's make all of the necessary vertices. We've got a vertex relating to A, B, C, and D. And then the property of being related to an element will be given by a directed edge. And so that's an edge with a direction to it, which we'll denote by an arrow. So notice A is related to itself. That means we need an edge from A to A like that and then we'll put an arrow. It doesn't really matter in this case because it is related to itself. Next, we've got A is related to B, so we'll put a um, edge from A to B, and then we'll put an arrow to say that A is related to B. Notice B is not related to A, so we don't have a directed edge going back in the other direction. Next, we've got C is related to D and D is related to C. So that means we've got an edge that is directed from C to D and D to C. Notice that there is no edge between A and C or B and D. Those are kind of floating off by themselves. Okay, so let's maybe get rid of this and we'll look at another example of a graphical representation of a relation. So for our next example, we're gonna do something that's pretty similar to one that we looked at before, example two. So here we've got the set containing one through six, and then our relation is defined as follows. X is related to Y. In other words, X comma Y is in this subset R. If and only if X divides Y, and x is not equal to y. So I'm just putting that extra condition that x is not equal to y to make our graph look a little bit nicer than it would otherwise. So that means we do not have one related to itself, two related to itself, so on and so forth. So let's get our graph built. It makes sense to put one at the top, then it makes sense to put the prime numbers next because those are the only numbers whose only divisor is one in themselves. So on this first row, we'll put like maybe the number two, we'll put the number three, next we need the number five. Those are the only prime numbers in our set. So next we can move to the next number that's not seen and that would be four. Notice that four is divisible by one, so we need an edge between one and four, and then four is divisible by two, so we need an edge between two and four. Then we've only got one number left, we need the number six, one divides six, so we need an edge between one and six. Three divides six, so we need an edge between one and six. And then two also divides six, so maybe we could hop an edge right there between two and six. And so that would be a nice graphical representation of this relation. Okay, so let's maybe clean all of this up and then we'll look at some properties that relations can have. Now we want to look at some properties that a relation can have. So here's our setup. We've got R is a relation on the set A. In other words, it's a subset of A cross A. And we'll be using the notation X, R, Y instead of X comma Y is in R. So the first property we want to look at is known as reflexivity. So R is reflexive if for all X in A, X is related to itself. So a lot of relations have this property. So some examples of relations that have this property would be just straight up equality. So notice if A is equal to A, then A is equal to A. Well, there's nothing really to that. And then another example would be maybe the set of real numbers along with one of the non-strict inequalities. So notice that two is less than or equal to two, so that's cool, and two is greater than or equal to two as well. Okay, well, we've got some more, like we could have maybe the set of n by n matrices and then similarity. So I'll let you guys look back in your linear algebra text to recall what similarity is, but it satisfies this property. And we're gonna be proving a lot of these really carefully in a forthcoming video when we talk about a so-called equivalence relation. Okay, so some non-examples 
would be maybe non-equality. So you could have any set and not equal to. Well, that kind of goes without saying. A is not not equal to itself. It's in fact equal to itself. So that means that it does not satisfy this reflexive property. Okay, another thing would be the strict equalities. So we could take any maybe set of numbers like R and then we could use the strict inequalities. Those are non-reflexive relations. Notice two is not strictly less than two. So it doesn't satisfy this rule here. Now our next property is symmetry. So we say that R is symmetric if for all X, Y, and A such that X is related to Y, we have Y is related to X. So we can actually make this an if then statement. If X is related to Y, then Y is related to X. And that's how you'd wanna prove that as a conditional statement. Okay, so let's look at some examples here. Well, we could have any set and equality. That's most definitely a symmetrical relation. We could have any set and not equality, or we could use our example with the matrices again. So in other words, we could take n by n matrices with real entries, and we could use the relation of similarity. So let's look at some non-examples. So the strict and the non-strict inequalities are non-examples. And well, why is that real quick? Let's put a little bubble right here. We have two is less than three, but three is not less than two. So notice symmetry is not satisfied by this inequality relationship. And then maybe we could take the natural numbers as our set and then divisibility is our relation. And notice that this is also not symmetric. We can give a little example of that too. So notice that two divides four, but four does not divide two. So now let's move on to our third property, which is transitivity. So we say that R is transitive if for all X, Y, Z, and A, X is related to Y and Y is related to Z, then X is related to Z. So now we could have, again, our standard example of equality. We could have um, our inequality relations. So we could take maybe the real numbers or maybe any ordered set of numbers with strict or non-strict inequalities. So those satisfy these transitivity relationships. We could have divisibility that satisfies this transitivity relationship. So we could put maybe natural numbers with divisibility. So notice two divides four and four divides eight. Well, that actually implies that two divides eight. And I think we proved this property back a couple of videos ago when we were looking at divisibility. We just didn't call it a relation and the transitive relationship here. Okay, now let's maybe look at some non-examples. So notice that any set contained with the not equals is a non-example. And we can actually give a little example of this. So let's do that. So let's say we're working in the integers. We have one is not equal to two and two is not equal to one, but one is not not equal to one, but it, that means it's equal to itself. So transitivity does not hold for this not equal to. So I'll let you guys play around with it and see if you can find some other examples of non-transitive relations. Maybe post in the comments and that's a good place to stop.